Hello folks and welcome to something a little different. Now today it is still way too hot to paint, so instead I put to you a question. Spinning around in front of us now are four miniatures. One of them is plastic, one metal, one resin, and one 3D printed. Now can you tell the difference? The Gene Steeler Cultist is probably kind of a gimme, <laughs> you might recognize him, but the others I think it might be a little more difficult to tell. Now a common question that comes up is whether or not you have to do anything different to paint these other types of miniatures. And the short answer, spoiler warning, is no. Once you've primed them, there's not really a huge difference between these materials. But if you've never come across any of them before, you know, maybe resin is new to you, or you've been put off by metal miniatures, I'm going to do a short comparison of these different materials and show you some samples. So let me know in the comments if you do know which ones are which, without having to check back through the archive, and we'll have a look at those samples now. Now, rather than a bunch of painted examples where you can't really see the difference, what I thought would be useful would be to go through a bunch of different materials one by one so you can actually see them before painting. So starting from the left, we've got plastic, metal, resin, and 3D printed resin. Now, you might not have a printer, but if you're purchasing miniatures online, there's a pretty good chance in this day and age you might find some 3D printed examples that you like and end up with those at home anyway. So I figure it's worth examining this one too. So for you, the modeler, what are the differences? Well, plastic's easy. If you've started collecting tabletop miniatures in the last 10 years, there's probably a pretty good chance that most of your collection is plastic miniatures. These are easy to assemble, they're user-friendly, they're non-toxic, there's a lot of bonuses to having a plastic army. As well, being able to convert them is extremely easy because you can, of course, cut plastic with a knife, which means making your own little changes and cleaning them up is way easier than with most of the other things that we've got here, certainly the metal at least. Now, potential downsides to plastic can sometimes be that some joins are a little fragile. Now, particularly I'm looking at those Games Workshop Night Haunt miniatures, you know, tiny, tiny joins, which are holding a lot of weight. If they snap, repairing them is going to be a bit of a pain in the neck. But for the most part, plastic is a very durable material. For us as painters, most importantly, it's very smooth and takes paint well. You do still need to prime it, of course, but the surface is nice and smooth. There's no imperfections. It's great stuff. And then we'll look at the metal miniatures. Now, metal might seem a little old-fashioned these days, but they're great because they don't have a huge amount of outlay from a production perspective. The cost of material is, unfortunately, on the rise, as pretty much everything else is. But for a small run of miniatures, where you don't need to sell a huge amount, or people aren't likely to buy a bunch of them, metal makes a good cost-effective alternative. As well, it's durable, it's got a lot of the same bonuses that plastic does. Because it's literally metal, it's probably the most difficult of the materials here to convert. You do need a saw or something, in most cases, to get through arms and what have you if you want to swap any pieces. But if you've got a lot of metal miniatures, investing in those tools is not a bad idea. As well, before you paint them, ordinarily you're going to need to do a little bit of cleanup, scraping mold lines and stuff like that, and for that you'll need a set of files. Now those aren't too hard to come by. If you've got metal miniatures which require assembly, now that can be a bit of a pain in the neck. Sometimes there's quite small joints or there's a lot of weight resting on a particular area. So depending on what you're doing, you might have to pin those together by drilling a hole in both sides and putting a little bit of metal rod, like a paperclip or something in between them, or using a specific sort of glue. Now, super glue is the easiest way to get these together. Uh, and I recommend a gel type if you're assembling like artillery pieces or such like that. Gel glue's always done really well for me. Now the main difference in my experience between metal and plastic from a painting perspective is that the surface on metal is normally a little bit rougher. You will get some surface on most metal miniatures. Now it's not all of them, and depending on how you prime them, you can mitigate that, but little pits and some gaps in the surface is not unheard of. So if you are looking for an extremely smooth finish, you're gonna need to prime it, sand some of those areas down and then prime it again. So a little bit more work, but not a huge amount. And the upshot is you've got a really huge variety of unusual miniatures that get cast in metal. Now from a production side of things, resin is material which has a lot in common with metal in that it's smaller runs, stuff which doesn't take a lot of investment to get started, 
but you do end up with pretty excellent detail on most of these miniatures. I tend to find that resin will hold slightly sharper edges than metal will, so if you're looking for extremely sharp detail, resin's the way to go. It's also way easier to convert than metal because you can clip it the same as you would with plastic, and the surface is ordinarily very smooth, but sometimes you will get little bubbles and stuff in the surface, which can be just dabbed in with a tiny bit of super glue and then sanded flat. To my mind, resin is kind of the best of both worlds. The only real downside to it is that it's not quite as durable as plastic, and if you snap a region, well, it's not always a bad thing. Resin tends to split and snap if you drop a miniature very cleanly, so it can be as simple as just fitting the pieces back together with a bit of super glue. Now, from an assembly perspective, remember that resin dust is toxic, so if you are sanding these to get parts to fit together, it's worth having a mask or something nearby. And then finally, 3D printed resin, which is kind of the middle ground, in my opinion, between real resin miniatures, well, it's a real miniature, but <laughs> traditionally made resin miniatures, and plastic. Once you've got your anti-aliasing settings dialed in, you'll get an incredibly smooth finish to the, the miniature itself, so you're not going to have to worry about any pitting and the like. And painting it is exactly the same as painting a plastic miniature, so not a huge amount to say here. The downsides are the same as with resin, it can be a little brittle, but in just the same way, if it snaps, it ordinarily snaps clean. So having had a quick look at the different materials, I'm going to take them outside, hit them with a primer, and we'll get a look at the differences between them then. Now once they're all primed, it's a little more difficult to tell them each apart. As a matter of fact, I think the only one that stands out in particular is the metal fella, mostly because of the little puddle base that he's standing on. Now I've used here Wraithbone from Citadel for two reasons. It's nice and bright, but most importantly it is very smooth, and I tend to find, especially with metals, if I want a smooth finish to paint over, then something like Wraithbone, Gracia, or even Automotive Primer. Now that'll sound crazy, but it's designed to give a smooth finish, good stuff for filling tiny gaps on stuff like metal miniatures. But this does make it a little difficult to see the differences between them, so I'm going to go ahead and shade them. Now I'm not actually painting them, all I'm going to do is use some Agrax Earthshade here and apply these over the miniatures so that you can see the detail a little more clearly. So what I'm going to do is bucket this on, and we'll come back in about half an hour once all of these have dried, and hopefully that will make some of the surface detail a little more visible. One of the few benefits to the heat is that that shade dries really quickly, but it does go a long way to helping illustrate the differences between these materials. Now the beautiful thing is that between the plastic, the resin, and the 3D printed resin, there's not really a huge amount of difference. So let's get a close up look. So side by side, our plastic and resin. I think you do still end up with a little bit more visible detail in the resin fella, which is nice, but plastic is still, yeah, it's, it didn't used to be, but a lot of work has gone into making plastic miniatures really nice, and yeah, I think it shows. Bunch of detail, very easy to paint over the top of. And I'm going to skip over the 3D print because it looks the same as these two anyway. I still think resin comes out on top for the amount of detail that holds, but yeah, that's me. The real difference comes when we look at the metal miniature. So side by side there with the plastic, I think you'll see what I meant about the metal having a slightly pitted surface. The shade will collect very differently on these guys, and it's... yeah. I only bring this up because a lot of folks these days are painting with wash stuff, so things like contrast or speed paint from the army painter, and the difference is that when you paint those over metal, you're going to get a slightly different result. That pitting will become more visible. Now this isn't really a fair test because metal miniatures, I mean we've been painting them for years, and when they're actually finished off with you know, traditional painting methods, that pitted surface disappears. And this is one of my older fellas, he is from the Artisan range, and what a cool miniature. So I include this painted guy as a point of comparison because I think it's important. It's otherwise not really a fair comparison. But that pitted surface is something you should be aware of if you're planning on using speed paint or contrast. And from this point onward, painting them all is exactly the same. You, know, you don't require any special techniques different to painting metal miniatures or plastic or resin. It's just a case of putting acrylics or enamels onto a flat surface. 
with a good primer and a bit of light so you can see what you're doing, you'll get a great result no matter what material you're using. So hopefully this does clear up a few things, maybe gives you a nudge to try something that you might not have done, or helps make you a little less nervous about something like metal or resin. I know that it can be daunting approaching something new, and for a lot of folks who are getting started, or even who have been involved in wargaming for a while, getting metal miniatures for the first time is still kind of, it, it's daunting. But if you've got any further questions or something that you want to know, feel free, drop a comment in the old box below. I'll do my best to answer. So thanks very much one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.